And I think we're live, but this is really, really scary. Wow. Because theoretically, we are live on both Twitch and YouTube. Oh. At the same time. Do we even have the the engine power for that? Yes, we do. We have very much, and it's called computer processing power because one does not go live on the internet with an engine. You're thinking of driving down the road. Oh. But that's okay. I, I forgive you for being not quite as technical. I thought for sure it was engines. Uh, I don't know what How many the cores? password is for this. Okay, I managed to guess it. Uh, Yay. Yay! All right, I so can you figure out the Doc, rest. I have a special guest co-host today. Who? It looks like we are live on Twitch, so that's good. But I have no idea if we are live on YouTube. And because I don't really watch YouTube videos, I oh. actually don't even know how to find out uh, if we're live on YouTube. I guess I could go to the dashboard and view the channel. Yes, that my friends. Insane. This will be the first week, theoretically. Yes, we are we are live right now. Wow! 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 wow. So this is the first week uh -huh. that we are live on both Twitch TV and YouTube. And we had a lot of our viewers express concern that Twitch was going to kick us out of the Cool Kids Club. Mm. And they could very well do that. But unfortunately, there just isn't a whole lot that we can do about it. So uh, we we had a couple of options. There's um, there's a service that you can use where you can, you can push to this external service and then it will propagate to all the different services that you want. But being the big nerds that we are around here, yeah. what we ended up doing was... Um, putting a virtual machine on one of our servers that runs an RTMP server, so it's some Nginx thing, and then... What's that? Is that Anthony? Nope. Oh, okay, I, I thought I heard Anthony's voice and I assumed there was some kind of catastrophic problem. You're always on the lookout for an Anthony or two. Yeah, because he, he basically... He, he and Jake actually worked together to get everything set up for this week. And going to Twitch and YouTube. Yes, and we didn't have it working as of one hour ago. Oh wow! Um, when because something to do with the Nginx config. Basically, the way that we determine which services we're streaming to is by copy pasting a particular string into the server, mm -hmm. and we copy pasted the wrong thing or something. Apparently, it's not like there's no UI for it. It's all just like command be, line. There should so, be copy paste spell check. Yeah, there there should be. Uh, thank you. That's me. Riley's on the WAN show today. Yeah, Riley's on the WAN show today. <laughs> That's my contribution. I, I don't know how much he actually knows about the topics, but I haven't um, looked at these at all. Yeah, but but he's he's pretty. So that's hey! that's what qualified him to fill in for Luke and James, both of whom are not here today. That means a lot coming from you, Linus. Uh, you're very welcome. <laughs> um, so so anyway, so we're live on both Twitch and YouTube. Which there's actually there's like there's different encoding settings that are optimal for each platform. So basically, what the server does does is we stream into our server and then our server encodes it in the most optimal way for each platform while also recording a local high quality copy of the original stream for itself Whoa. and then the machine that we're streaming from so in this case it's this box right over here um the one that we we actually did a video on it we built uh, our like corsair rgb wan show streaming pc a little while ago right so that is also going to save a high quality local copy to itself so the idea is that we are streaming to our multiple services and we are saving at least two original quality copies at any given time. So we shouldn't run into a situation again where we are going to, where we'll, we'll screw up and we'll lose the WAN show, which actually hasn't happened in a long time, but it had happened mm. at times in the past. Well, that sounds real fancy. Yes, thank you. Um, so, we, you know what? Let's just roll the intro. You this are, is not... You are, you are enjoying that. The heckling is for techling. Yeah, well, no, nah, now I get to... The tables have turned. Ha-ha. <laughs> nope, nope, they can't see you. Swamps don't give me swamp butt because... I'm always ready. We really got to redo this. <laughs> That's really Please. old. It's great. Well, we used to have different versions of it. It was supposed to be like a Simpsons intro thing where there was a different oh, one. Oh, like, like there would be a different week. thing every time? Yeah. Mm. Like the just, line effective intro. And then we just never did it. You have uh, to say the sponsor? Uh, no. Well, 
theoretically I should. Honey Fresh Book Savage Jerky. I will I will talk in more depth about our sponsors on the WAN show later. Honey Fresh Books Savage Jerky. It sounds like the beginning of a rhyme, but I won't continue. You know what? I kind of want to find the old intro and show it to you guys. Uh here it is. <laughs> when intro dot M O V. Oh Lord. Oh these no. Are some... These are some very old. Uh, Apple makes MOVs. You don't want to play those. You know what? Should I? You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's. Uh, we're getting wild. Yeah, we're we're gonna go through. We're gonna dig through the WAN show folder on the server. Whoa. We're gonna find us some assets here. Just buckle in. Strap uh, in, boys and gals. Hey, no, this this could actually be cool. Don't make fun of me. This is neat. I'm, so I'm we're not, di we're digging narrating. through the archive. So here's the WAN show. Uh, so here's the intro. Yeah, there we go. Why don't we adjust the size of these uh, these here these here thumbnails there? Um, so here's the swamp intro. So this is the one you're probably familiar with. I'm just gonna mute my computer here. Uh, blip. Oh, yeah, there we go. So there we go. So that's the one that you're familiar with. But there uh -huh. was few, few people probably remember this, but there was a version before this. When intro OG. Oh. What, what's this? He's walking. He's walking in, in the Egypt, sand. And this is. And now there's there's oh, a trap. Oh, I remember seeing that. Yeah. So. But that's the same. So Ed actually, I think. Um, powered by Razor Comms. <laughs> oh wow. That everyone still uses. Um. So so, Ed actually revealed this. I think in a. Oh no, that video is the GPD Pocket Two. Is that live yet? Yes, it is. So Ed revealed his secret. I don't know if it actually made it into the final cut of the video, mm -hmm. but um, he was like, yeah, the way to use copyrighted artwork is you turn it into pixel art. And I'm like... Oh, so is that pyramids thing? So those uh... pyramids are actual pyramids. <laughs> don't say that. Oh, Edsel. So, yeah. yeah, so these... These are actual pyramids. I mean, good luck ever figuring out what picture. Those this is an real, actual wall. Those are the real pyramids. Yeah, and this is a real spike. No, that's not a real <laughs> spike. <laughs> that, that's yeah, a, that would be pretty sad. It's a fake spike. Although that would be a pretty impressive program that could turn a picture of a real wall of spikes into yeah, that. Yeah, into that, yeah. Um, so so that was that was Ed's like master like deception. So he was like, Oh yeah, we could do a new one like all the time. This takes like yeah. thirty seconds to just steal artwork and then turn somebody, it into pixel art. I think somebody would have caught on eventually. Don't call it stealing for yeah. shame, Edsel. Yeah, he doesn't want us to call it stealing. Sorry, borrowing with style. <laughs> wow, Toy Story reference. Okay, cool. <laughs> this isn't stealing; it's borrowing with style. That would be a very different movie if that was what the actual line was. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear is a master thief. <laughs> uh, so we got a lot of great topics for you guys today and also some Do pretty we? mediocre ones, I think. Um, the mm. U.S. courts say that price caps don't apply to areas with only one ISP. We have a lot of notes on that. Uh, also, this is a rumor, there's a lot of hearsay here, um, that NVIDIA will be controlling their Ad and Bortner partners, controlling their ability to seed the upcoming RTX cards to the press huh. through driver distribution. And Tom's Hardware wrote a real funny article. It was hilarious. Ooh. Yeah, it was hilarious if it, it was, was on The Onion. <laughs> A lot of people thought it should have belonged on the onion, that's for sure. Uh, what else we got? Um, Global Foundries halts seven nanometer development. It's a big deal. They've been on the leading edge of development for a while, and now they're not. AMD has moved to TSMC for all of their wah, manufacturing wah. needs. Okay, so normally we do the intro after we introduce the topics for the day, but clearly that isn't going to happen today because we already ran it. We could it run it again happened. for fun, but we've yeah. already run it a couple times. If you were paying attention, so it already that's happened. Not fly. Yep. Um, all right, so why don't we jump right into how are you? I'm good. I've actually hardly believe it or not. I I see Riley very little. Yeah, honestly, this this when you were like, or or um, Colton was like, are you gonna uh, host the WAN show today? I was like, with Linus, like. <laughs> I haven't even like talked to him the whole time I was here. Basically, we've had like little conversations. Yeah, we had a couple meetings, and then like at the beginning, where a lot of you probably noticed there were some uh, some issues with some of the early episodes of TechLinked. Mm. Like I think the very first one that I'm the heckler, I'm just like talking, like every ten yeah. seconds, and yeah. it's 
well, very we were, annoying. We were figuring out, the, yeah, you know, the 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 format and whatnot. Yeah, like who's heckling? Trying to find the right dynamic. Yeah, um, that wasn't it. Uh, there was also an early one. That, now this was this was a really frustrating story, because do you remember the one where we mic'd up the heckler? Yes. Okay. So we had a lot of people, like quite literally everyone oh, who no. watched it. We had a lot of people not like mm. that the person off camera was also mic'd up. Yeah. So it created this weird, like, disembodied voice. Right. And it, I think it was too too loud in those episodes it as well. It was too loud. Because I think too now clear. where we're at is we don't have the person, the heckler mic'd. But it's also that, like, you can't really hear them that well. So, so I feel like we might, I was, I was going to talk to Edsel about, like, miking them, but, like, making it quiet. I don't know. Well, that was the intention that time. Yeah. We never really intended work. for the heckler to just sound so so I specifically asked Dennis. I said, "Hey, so I'm miking myself up. Yeah, it was me. So I'm miking myself up today to be the heckler. But I need to make sure because we don't want it to be like 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 they're also hosting the video." Right. I I need to make sure is it quick for you to add reverb mm. and turn down the volume? Right. So that it sounds like they're off camera. He goes, oh, yeah, no problem. And I go, oh, good. But that, and so then I watch the video. I'm like, I'm scrolling through the comments. I'm like, so wait, 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 what? We never did it. it so you're I, blaming Dennis for this. Oh, 100%. Oh. I asked him the next day. He's like, oh, I didn't have time. And I'm like, don't blame. Dennis is a, Dennis is a pure soul. Okay, so, don't. So I'm sitting here going, I asked you if it's quick. Mm-hmm. And, That's well, I mean, why I asked you if it's quick. See, all we because I to, knew you wouldn't have a lot of time. All we would need to do is just set up another boom mic. But yeah, it's that like, could work. Yeah, but then it's like we have two mics on one setup. We can't afford to do that. Yeah, we actually can. We actually have a couple of NTG twos. No, that that's too. It's way too crazy. I don't think we've used them in a couple of years. You'd have to get the mic out of the package, put it on the stand. It's just. Don't get me started. You know what's really funny is when Linus Media Group first started, um, I would I would go into the NCIX studio mm. and I would be very envious of all of the equipment that oh. NCIX Tech Tips had. That was just like strewn around in random. Just places? in general, like yeah, there was yeah. so much gear. What do you what? Like computer. Oh, you gear. mean in the early days? Yeah, yeah oh, okay. like when Linus Media Group first started. <laughs> I thought you were talking about like when I was there. I was like, we what had are you talking one about? camera. Uh, two lights right we owned one microphone meanwhile ncix tech tips had like wireless microphones oh, yeah. and like this high tech stuff oh yeah ncix at the forefront of technology yeah, yeah. and uh and then and then it was it was just it was fun the the contrast at the end there when i when i went to the ncix <laughs> you, bankruptcy you, auction you felt like good you're like walking in you're like these guys ain't got anything and your guys's primary microphone which was a rode ntg2 right that's right yeah your guys's primary microphone was sitting there up for auction <laughs> Oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah it was up for auction. I wanted to go to the auction. And I was like, oh, no. quaint. An NTG2. I remember those. Oh. Or is it NT2? NT2 or NTG? I think, I think it's it was NT. NTG2. I think. Is it NT? Whatever. Pretty sure. Uh, road, You're going to Google that? Yeah. Road NT. NTG2. I think it is NTG2. Okay, good. Well, yeah. anyway. Anyway, I was like, oh, quaint. We have a couple of those. I don't think we've used them in a while. Mm. In a while. Oh, perhaps we should. Uh, we could have it as an antique on perhaps, set. Perhaps we should buy it. NTG2 is still really good. And per perhaps we should buy their employees as well. <laughs> well, one of them. Well, well one no, of them you've anyway. Had, you've had a few of them now. Yeah, have I? Well, Ivan. Oh, yeah, that's right. We have Ivan. Although he didn't, strictly speaking, work for the uh, Tech Tips team. What he, the heck did Ivan do? He was actually helping with a lot of the scripts yeah. at the uh, end of the... Was he even getting paid for that? Oh, well, I don't know. He was getting paid to do his job. I don't know. I don't know if that was like strictly part of his job description, but he definitely helped a lot, especially with like graphics card reviews and stuff. Right. Yeah. Love that guy. So how's it going at Linus Media Group? We, I don't think we ever did a mid-year review for you. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you, we did. Did. you know what? Did we? That's probably the longest conversation that we've had is when you you. Oh, oh, we must rated, have done yours rated early. my performance. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so how's it going? Are you happy? I'm very happy. You, you can tell I'm them if you're not happy. It's fine. <laughs> well, now I'm stressed because. This is like another mid-review re review right now. <laughs> no, I'm having a great time, honestly. It's really good to be able to do the tech news type of content again and make stupid jokes. And Yeah, it's been fun. And I get actually. to heckle you 
Wait, no, I was I always heckled you. Yes. So that's a little more stressful is that now I'm getting heckled as well. Yeah. Oh, I used wow. to be able to do the show by myself and like have no one like they're all behind the camera, like they can't say anything. It's so funny. So uh back in the NCIX Tech Tips days, I never watched their show. So the only time I would watch Netlinked was when I was on it because I wanted yeah. to see like the goofball ways that they would edit it. So right. you guys would have, because you guys might not, might, I don't know, I don't know if you guys watched or not, but um, what was kind of cool about NCIX Tech Tips was that we shot it on what was effectively a blue screen. Mm. So what that meant was there was a lot of creativity in yeah. the editing where you could like take something that was done in the show and you could easily move it around yeah. and manipulate it and blow it up and shrink it. Um, so, so, so that was, that was, that was actually a really cool thing it about awesome. it. It was awesome. We could do so many things. It was sort of accidentally on purpose and I can mm. explain the rationale behind why the entire NCIX Tech Tip studio was yeah. a blue screen and a green screen. Because you had a set first. You had like a background Yeah, graphic. with like a TV on it and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then we, we kind of moved away from that and we went to blue and green screen paint even. Right. Like the, the Roscoe stuff. Yep. Um, anyway. Uh, so where, where was I going with that? Right. So I would never watch the episodes that I wasn't in. So I had always thought that the heckling, because they would always give me crap when I was hosting the video and I would get, and it's, it's came about because I would give them crap about things I didn't like about the script or things right. that I did like, but I just wanted to be mean to them. You certainly did. Um, and, but, and then they would dish it back to me and it kind of became this, this fun dynamic. You thought we did that all the time. <laughs> I thought you did it all the time. <laughs> nope. I thought, I thought it was like a fundamental part of the format. Just for Linus. So anyway, uh, Riley comes in and hosts, I think it was your first tech link oh my gosh and i start like saying stuff oh that was horrible and he just like stops so so riley's like saying something <laughs> and i'm like oh yeah you know oh, your mom oh, or whatever gosh. yeah that and was so no no no, no. the first the first the first video that i was on with you you were hosting it and then or we were hosting it together or something and i just like didn't understand how to do things or did, did you do that for my first episode you just yelled i think things i did or maybe it was your second one or something i don't remember that at all maybe i was out of the office for your first one but no there was one where i yelled stuff and you just like <laughs> you just <laughs> froze, like, froze like, up every time and you would like are you gonna edit this out or and, and and so what he would do is he would stop and he'd go back to the beginning of the paragraph yeah because he's like trying to think of what his comeback is for oh, when I heckle. Here. Yeah, here. Oh, yeah, 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 here. Yeah, yeah, that definitely, yeah, that happened here. So there was I was just like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't understand. I, there's a script. I'm supposed to read a script. I only know how to dish it out. I don't know how to take it. That's exactly right. That's exactly what the situation was. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun kind of finding our finding our legs. I think a couple of the episodes last week, um, including one of the ones that I hosted was, were just awful, but we're, we're still finding our rhythm. I think actually the one that I hosted last week was the worst tech link I've hosted yet. Well, apparently speaking of Twitch, the one that I hosted where it's like, or steam TV yeah. versus Twitch, like that wouldn't, well, I don't, I, it, it didn't do well anyways. In terms yeah. Of I, I like, don't think that's it. The funny thing about, about Twitch and game streaming, and I, I think we talked about this before, but it's like, I don't blame a video about Twitch and or game streaming for not doing well, mm. because it's one of those things where like, if you're into it, then you're like, oh yeah, Twitch. Yeah. Twitch is huge. I love Twitch. And then if you're not into it, I mean, and you're the kind of person where I'll be at like a family reunion or something and I'm, oh, and what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I, 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 make, uh, I make videos on YouTube. <laughs> oh, so you work for Google, <laughs> even if they even know that. And I'm like, yeah, if they knew, yeah, this no, I, no, I don't. And they're like, oh, so how do you get paid then? I'm like, well, you know how- I busk. <laughs> you know how on TV, like mm. they, there's, there's commercials. yeah. <laughs> okay like that <laughs> like oh yeah. okay it's definitely like i've i've told people that i make videos as a job a few times yeah. and they're just like and do you just do that for fun or <laughs> i'm like um uh, yeah yeah I sure do. yeah it is fun I mean, yeah you know realistically you know what i could do something else i could bust tables so yes i'm doing this for fun it's not bad well your feet hurt you're on your feet a lot should we talk about did you about work in the restaurant or? business i did Really? I was only a busser. Really? I only bus tables. I didn't uh, graduate to to being a waiter. I want to know the story here. Why did they not let you wait tables? Oh, no, I don't think I ever 
want I didn't think I ever asked for it specifically. So you just never aspired to more than busing. <laughs> it was Olive Garden. Do I understand not, this I didn't, correctly? I didn't have career aspirations at Olive Garden. I see. But I well, is this as much to do with Olive Garden being one of those places that kind of has a policy about who waits the tables? Well, and what gender they are and how much boob they have hanging out? Oh, no. No, no. no. Olive Garden's not one of those? I don't think so. Okay, so it's not Earl's. You're thinking of Hooters. No, no. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not. not no, not a lot Hooters. Of people a lot of people no, think I no. worked at Hooters. I did <laughs> no, not. I'm... That's a common misconception. No, that's not what I mean. No, I mean, you've been to, like, Cactus Club. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, Olive Garden is, Where... like, they wear, like, ties and stuff. They're very formal, I... like the... I will confess, I don't think I have ever eaten at Olive Garden. Linus, tell... let me tell you something. Free breadsticks, <laughs> <laughs> and you get a free, and you get a soup and, or salad with every entree. Okay. okay, do you still work for Olive get, Garden secretly? Are you? <laughs> you are you a the, spy? You get a free soup with your entree. Are you a secret informant? Unlimited breadsticks. It's very bad for you. Am I a secret informant? Oh God. <laughs> yep. Okay, nope. so you bust tables. Mm -hmm. Never graduated to <laughs> never waiting. Gra never finished the program. And you know what? I would like you to talk about the other job that you actually still have. Oh yeah, why? <laughs> Just because I think I think people would like to go and get their fix of Riley. Oh man, okay. Okay, so Riley actually only works here part time, <laughs> mm. not because we weren't willing to hire him full time, but because he actually has another job. Oh my goodness! Wow. As what a happened? secret informant. <laughs> I'm not the secret informant. You aren't. Uh, no, and this is not the real site. Is this not the site? <laughs> no, it's, uh, uh, I can't wait, click. try going to tattle.com. Remember, it's tattle now. Oh. oh. Secret informant sounds so much There like you go. So this is the actual secret. site, I guess. Okay. Tattle.com. Uh, so the tat tattle. Secret informant, though. Yeah, secret informant is the show. Oh. Secret informant is the show, and the company is tattle. And this is some of the episodes and some other things. You know what? I where's my favorite one? The one where you try like jujitsu or something? Oh, uh, that's probably not on here. You have to go to the YouTube channel. Just oh. click on a video. Really? Click on this, and right. then go to videos. Okay. It's gonna be in here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Here we go. This Riley is my tries Aikido. This is my favorite episode. Look at these ads. Skip. <laughs> oh, take that, Riley. Yeah. So this is uh, so basically this show is I had, there's a secret informant from like a given culture. This is Miho. She was the Japanese secret cool. informant. So we went and did a Japanese thing, and it basically just like I learned something about the culture. Usually it's eating food, but this episode was <laughs> me doing a martial art. That's what it is. Is this really you trying your best? Look, I was half laughing this entire time because it's like a very, very serious, <laughs> it's a very, very serious discipline. And I was like, clearly like not, f like they're stretching, I'm not very flexible. They're like rolling and stuff. I'm a big, lanky, awkward white guy. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of, actually the instructor was white. That's not the instructor. Anyways, yep. Check it out. <laughs> if you want to watch Riley get thrown around for 10 minutes, it's like actually awesome. Oh, man. Ah! That's one of my favorite moments. <laughs> yep, so yeah, I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, though. Yeah. Season two is out now, right? It's coming out. It's coming I think out. we're in episode four now. Cool. Or three? Yeah. Anyways, All this, right. is, this is a tech show. This is about tech news. Yeah, that's the theory, but WAN Show is actually far less about tech news than you might think. Yeah, so... Now that you're on it, can, do you see how little about tech news it actually well, is? Well, you know, this is my second time hosting. I was on with James, yeah. and that time I think we were like, we got to talk about the news. No, I just, I but just, now that I'm on with you, I see that you I, don't care about technology at all. I, I care about technology. You I actually just, care about... I don't care about the news. Secret informant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, okay, so we do actually have a couple of pretty big topics to talk about this week. Yeah, what, do you, what are the big, because so, we don't have time for everything. Now. This was posted by RC Mail on the forum. The original article is from ArsTechnica.com, and this is some pretty, pretty garbo-looking stuff that we got going on right here. So the FCC basically, according to a, a U.S. court, 
can define markets with only a single internet service provider as competitive, which to me means <laughs> kind that of, uh... basically that court doesn't have like, it's not the court of using the dictionary court, you know? Yeah. Like it must be a different kind of court. It's be- kind of like the court in um, Harry Potter when they go and they're convicting people for, you know, for no, for bad reasons, you know, Linus? I actually rewatched the entire Harry Potter series not very long ago. So oh, really? yeah, so the You know so, what I'm talking about. So yeah, so the the scene is they're bringing in they're bringing in witches, they're taking their wands and then they're asking whose wand it is. And if oh, they say yeah. it's there, if they say it's not theirs, then they can say, "Well, then you're not right. a witch." But and if they say it is theirs, then they can say like, that they not... stole it and then right. they can convict them of stealing. So they can either convict them of not being pure blood or whatever or of stealing. Or mm-hmm. whatever, or they ask them who they stole it from. You went way deeper yeah. than I meant. Yeah. To go anyway, that throwaway reference. Anyway, uh, you know, Dolores Umbridge is a bad, bad person. Oh, you might I say she's her. a witch. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. Get it? Because I got it. She's a witch. Anyway. Yep. So an appeals court has upheld an FCC ruling that broadband markets can be competitive, <clears throat> even when there is only one internet provider. What so is the logic? Then? The original FCC decision was appealed by competitive local exchange carriers and purchasers of business broadband, including Sprint and Windstream. It's actually a little more nuanced than it sounds, though. So this decision eliminated price caps in any given county if 50% of potential customers are within a half mile of a location served by a competitive provider. So the FCC's position then is that nearby networks can close the half mile gap expanding into the areas in question. So in theory, if that reigning single ISP is charging too much for service, then that neighboring competitor should be financially incentivized to expand into the area. Man, this is like really market sorts itself out type of Yeah, uh, so the FCC cited evidence that some competitors will build as far as a mile out and said that most of the buildings at issue are far closer to competitive fiber than half a mile. mile. The CLEC's position is that it's often not feasible for neighboring ISPs to expand into these areas. Um, Wow. And then the FCC argued that the CLEC's petitioners' studies inflate costs by selecting the most expensive build, entirely underground lines, uh, presuming that a separate lateral line for each individual, presuming a separate lateral line for each individual low bandwidth customer, and treating the main fiber ring as part of the cost of reaching new customers rather than as an existing sunk cost near a potential new customer. So there's conflicting evidence in the judge's ruling. While we recognize the relevant data presents radically different pictures of the competitiveness of the market, depending on the economic theory applied and the weight given to the conflicting pieces of infer- of evidence. <laughs> but the FCC may rationally choose which evidence to believe. Um, that is okay. too bad. So they have denied the petitions for review as to the competitive market test because the FCC's resolution of competing evidence was not arbitrary and capricious. So basically, even if you only have one ISP to choose from, your market can be considered competitive because there might be an ISP within half a mile that could build out to provide service. And I think that's really where the core of the issue lies, is like, if you have one ISP to choose from, you have one ISP to choose from. It's not competitive. Just It's like saying that... You don't actually have a choice. Well, it's like saying that Oh, there's lots of competition here when there could be competition in the future. You're you're yeah. you're acting as if a future is here already. So but it's I mean, not. this is a really frustrating issue because on the one hand, um I am pretty free enterprise mm. in general. I'm a capitalist. Um but the problem here is that while you can make these sort of free market capitalist sort of arguments for why there shouldn't be a bunch of regulation on what the major ISPs can or cannot do, how much they can or cannot charge their customers. You can make those arguments, but the problem is that that ship sailed like a hundred years ago. Hmm. What do you mean? At least maybe not a hundred years ago, but that that ship's, yeah, no, not the Mayflower, but the, the ship of having an unregulated market for telecommunications has already sailed. I see. So we now have regulation, so. you have to regulate it because building up that infrastructure was a joint enterprise between the private and the public sector. Hmm. So because there was a public investment in it, there have to be public rules and that infrastructure has to continue to serve the public. 
it's already a done deal. Yeah. And besides, the alternative, having just any Tom, Dick, and Harry be allowed to start their ISP without regulations and, you know, build, put down fiber lines right. or you know, run copper wiring <laughs> wherever they want. It's anarchy. I mean, it's it's like when you go to a developing nation and you look at a telephone pole and you go, my goodness, like, that <laughs> is a fire hazard mm -hmm. because there's so many different lines running every which way. There's no, there's nothing to, to keep it under control. Yeah. When you actually don't necessarily need that much if you've got cooperation of the companies that manage these lines and you've got a regulating body sitting over top making sure that everyone is playing fairly i mean i also i also see the argument from the perspective of like hey we should like set it up so that these companies are incentivized to expand their network and make things better but the problem is is that like you said well like you said there's already regulation and also yep. internet is way more of a crucial part of everyday human, life uh, life yeah, yeah in 2018 so it's like these kind of rules i think are definitely a little backwards thing and the other issue with these with the sort of the free market argument is that it makes a lot of very optimistic assumptions about the way that businesses will behave mm. so the free market argument for uh well there's an isp nearby surely they could build out another half mile of fiber in order to access these customers um, so you could say, well, surely that's the way that a competitive company would behave. Right. Except that it might not be. It might actually be much more profitable for that company to say, hey. We hey, got a monopoly over here. Hey, bud, you keep your monopoly over there. We'll keep ours over here. Yeah. Neither of us will invest in any new fiber, and we'll each just charge more because who are you going to go to? And then they do one of these. Um. And I mean, you saw something similar happen with the uh, with the corporate tax breaks that recently happened in the U.S. Like, look, I'm a business owner. I would love if our my corporate tax rate was 21. percent It is a lot higher than that. Mm. That would be super cool for me. Um, who else would it be cool for? The theory was it would be super cool for the customers and the employees who would definitely get those savings passed along to them. In practice. No. What we're really seeing is a lot of stock buybacks. Do you know what stock buybacks do? Uh, they don't lower the price of the product for the uh, customer. So I can pretty much guarantee you that the new iPhone 10s that Apple unveils on uh, September the 12th are not going to have a 10% price break. Mm. Guarantee you that one. <laughs> um, Take that to the bank. They do not go to the employees. There were a couple of token wage increases that did occur, but by and large, that has not been the trend that everyone gets paid 10% more. Um, so what a stock buyback does is it creates a shortage of the available stocks for that company because they are effectively buying their own stocks. And stocks, the pricing of a stock is entirely controlled by supply and demand. So if a company is running out and buying back its own stocks, what it is effectively doing is increasing the value of the stocks that are already held by shareholders. Mm. So the shareholders are making money, bearing in mind, of course, that any money you own in stocks is is, is, is paper money. It's theoretical money until you actually sell it for a currency. But then again, currencies can fluctuate far more these days than uh, a lot of people would be comfortable with. So you could, you could again make the argument that paper money is also just, just, pa just paper money. Um, and, you know, maybe we should all just go back to gold. I mean, <laughs> now all of a sudden we're going down a rabbit hole. But the point <laughs> is, many of the stockholders, the shareholders for these large publicly traded companies are the executives that work for them. So who ended up getting paid when a company like, and I actually, you know what? I'm not going to use any specifics because I can't remember off the top of my head any that have participated in a great deal of, of buying back of stock. But the people getting paid are the people who own shares. And some of those people are members of the general public. But this was pitched as some kind of a, of a boon for the everyman. And as a business owner, I can tell you, Anyone out there who's trying to make the argument that business owners were going to take an extra, an extra double-digit percentage of effective profits, and and just <laughs> go up in their zeppelin yeah, and, go and, and throw it out of the <laughs> throw it out, rain it down yeah. on the people on the downtrodden, yeah, is an idiot. That's not how. That's not capitalism works. That's not what I would do. Right. And that's not what anyone else would do because that's. I'm, what I'm kind of confused about is yeah. what is the what what is it in it for the FCC 
It's the FCC, right? Yeah. What's yeah. in it for them by by making this ruling? Because obviously, it's good for the ISPs. This what, is this is where the, is rabbit, the government's interest in doing this. This is where the rabbit hole, quite frankly, goes a lot deeper than I'm familiar with, because mm. it's like I don't know the intricacies of the way that all of these agencies interact with each other, right. and like, there's a lot of people that I kind of I, I look at what they're doing and I go. What's motivating you to say the things you're saying right now mm. or do the things you're doing right now? Like, are there are there pictures of you like with goats? Like, like, I, I mean, very compromising, okay. very compromising photographs. You goats? Know? Yeah. <laughs> like naked, you know, like shaved goats and like whipped cream all over the place. Like, I just look, man, if somebody just, wants to hang out with whipped cream and goats, that's. That's fine, you know, as long as everyone everything's consensual. You know what I mean? I just I, I I look at I look at the things that these people say and the things they do, and I go, Do well, you love hanging out with goats? You know, you've got an education from Harvard or Princeton or whatever. Presumably, mm -hmm. basic fundamental like using your noggin a little bit and yeah. was part of the curriculum there. <laughs> um, so clearly, you don't actually believe what you're saying. Mm. So so what what are we doing here? You know, like people, what are, how are we doing this? People are flawed, Linus. Um, anyway, we should probably move on. To that. Yeah, why don't we move on? Why don't we do, <clears throat> why don't we do some? Speaking of getting paid, sponsor spots. Oh right, yeah, FreshBooks. Hey. Woo. So FreshBooks is the super simple to use invoicing tool that actually does a lot more than just help you create and send slick looking invoices. It lets you track your time with their timesheet function, manage your expenses, and it keeps helps keep track of who owes you what. It's also got a feature that tells you when your clients look at your invoice for the first time. Hmm. So if, say for example you were a contractor, yes. you could use FreshBooks in order to send a bill to uh, the people who you contract to. I wouldn't have to fill out the Excel sheet myself. Actually, no. You sh you should probably look into FreshBooks. Actually, <laughs> um, you really should try should. it. It's actually pretty good. Uh, um, the mobile app has all the functionality of their desktop version, so you can take FreshBooks with you wherever you go. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to their support staff, where you will talk to a real human. No phone tree, no escalations, no return calls, just answers. So go to freshbooks.com/wen and claim your free trial today. Okay, I will. I, I actually don't know if you've twisted Yvonne's arm into doing all the work for you. But if you are actually doing all this stuff yourself, you might want to look into it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I will. <laughs> uh, speaking, of, what? speaking of things to look into, honey. Uh, for those of you who don't oh. know what honey is, it's a delicious syrup that you mm. can pour on pretty much anything, and it'll make it sweet and, and yummy. Wasps no, make it. It's a free breath. No, they don't. Huh? Wasps? What? Wasps don't make honey. Bees make. They look Are like you they serious? would. They look like they would. Are you serious right now? You thought? <laughs> no, I think actually that was a joke. But I think wasps do make their own type of honey, but it's not very good. <laughs> wasps steal honey yeah, exactly. in large amounts if Making, they can get stealing, access to a beehive. You know, but they are carnivores feeding what on. What do larva, their babies eat if they don't make honey? Feeding on larvae and small insects. They for those of you that don't know what honey, jaws. but for the actual, what the honey sponsor thing is. Wasps, a, don't stop backpedaling. Wasps <laughs> do not, in fact, store anything. So they don't. Their paper-like combs are only used to rear wasp larvae. They don't even have, like, a little bit? <laughs> no! <laughs> not according to theguardian.com, anyway. Like, what do they know? They're from England. Okay, so honey is a free browser extension available on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, if you're some kind of chump and you use Safari. And it's and it saves you to actually, Safari's okay. The only thing, okay, look. I don't use Safari. The thing that bothers me about Safari is that their tabs. <laughs> this show is Their tabs don't show favicons. Three hours long. Uh -huh. fa fa what? The favicons. Show? You what know what those? favicon is? Look, the these. It's the little here. Look, oh, guys, little, the, this um, is a favicon. Little icons. Minus the screen. Yeah. 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 So a favicon is the little icon that indicates what the crap website that is at a, at a glance. Uh huh. Right. Okay. So and here's, Safari doesn't have that. That's true. It's just it's gray. It's very irritating. It's just gray. When uh, when when Lauren has a bunch of tabs open, I'm just like, what? Do, how do you? Yeah. How do you do anything? So if you're a tab monster like me, it's very frustrating. Right. Anyway, anyway, back on topic. Honey, it's a browser extension. <laughs> okay, it's it. It's, what? I don't have the thing on. I'm getting flustered here. Okay. Oh, you got it. It's now. free. Okay. You save money online at over thirty thousand stores. It works on Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, Walmart, <clears> and <throat> more. 
Honey gets a small commission from the sites, okay, for referring you, right. and then Honey saves you money. So you don't have to pay for it at all. It's always free. Um, it's kind actually, of like a no-brainer type Yeah, thing. We've, we've had some of our staff here switch over to using Honey. Colton and Brandon, I think, have saved some money already shopping online. And basically nice. what it does is it finds the best coupon and the best deal and automatically applies it to your cart. Yeah. Boom. And so you get, don't notice it the rest of the time. So get Honey for free right now at joinhoney.com slash Linus. And it is be honey, not wasp honey. It's whatever honey you want. You know, like Linus, you can't tell people what kind of honey they can have and not have. But what I can do, because you Ooh. are on the WAN show, Mojo. is I can... You're, you're not a vegetarian, are you? Uh, no. Good. You should have said you were a vegetarian, because you're going to try the Reaper today. And I'm just going to eat some teriyaki, because... Are you into spicy? <clears throat> Are See, you into spicy? I like spiciness when it's like part of the flavor and when you just like take something that's not naturally spicy and then like make it ridiculously spicy. That's a whole other thing. Savage Jerky is made with the best ingredients without nitrates or preservatives with the goal of creating a snack that's full of flavor and spice but that isn't bad for you. <laughs> They've got 13 different flavors. My personal favorite is the maple buffalo bacon. Sriracha bacon's good. Mo anything moho is good. The traditional is really good. Oh. Um... They also make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and a spice rub, and their Carolina Reaper hot sauce uses one of the hottest peppers in the world. It's actually really nice. I tried it on the show last week. So you guys can use offer code LTT to save 10% on their products oh. over at savagejerky.com. You know, the How was that? The flavor is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, like, it was very spicy, but... Oh. You recovered from that faster than I expected. It's burning still. It's working. It's doing it's doing the devil's work, but it's. Uh, I mean, it tastes good. I think for people who are like crazy into spice, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Not all the flavors are so spicy. Yeah, brother. Can I help you? Have you uh, been responding to any of the super chats? Oh. Wow. Wow. Oh, super. oh Nick's bugging me about responding to some super chats. Because why would people give you money if you're not gonna read them? No, no, I'm I'm gonna read them. I'm going to read them. I really should have had the Twitch open. But yeah, Yellow Havoc says, my first live WAN show. Thank you guys for all the hours I've spent watching. No, no, thank you for the hours you've spent watching. Because, um, wait, the hours that you've spent watching, we you're thanking us for that. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, yeah. Wait, okay, thank you, Yellow Havoc. Um, okay, why don't we actually do at least one more tech topic here? Because I really wanted to talk about this rumor. Ooh. So this was posted by Aethan Immortal on the juicy? forum, and it's originally from Hard OCP. Is it Juicy Rumors? Juicy Rumors, no. Um, oh. And the article basically says that NVIDIA is controlling the ability of add-in board partners, so that's your ASUS's, Gigabytes, EVGAs of the world, uh, MSI. They're controlling add-in board partners' abilities to seed RTX cards to the press for independent evaluation through driver distribution. I thought you told me you didn't want to talk about this. No, we can talk about this. Okay. So, uh, I, I didn't <clears> think <throat> it was great for TechLinked because I think it's a little bit more nuanced right. than we have time in about for in about like Oh, so TechLink has seconds. no nuance. Okay, fine. Yeah, whatever. Um, so a comparison is being made here to the GeForce Partner Program where NVIDIA, NVIDIA was exerting control over their AIBs and OEM brands right. with the GeForce Partner Program. So now it's exerting control over who the EIB, AIB can have review their own custom cards. Hmm. So NVIDIA has asked that the AIBs tell NVIDIA who will be reviewing their custom RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti cards. And like, they have asked for reviewers' email and phone numbers. So, so like they want to know who specifically from that publication will be reviewing it? Yes. Interesting. So with the list of reviewers have been submitted to NVIDIA and then NVIDIA has put together its own list of approved reviewers and sent their approved list back to let them know who they're allowed to sample cards to. So they are not allowing the AIBs to distribute drivers with the review cards. For a reviewer to have access, they must sign NVIDIA's multi-year NDA, log into a portal to obtain the driver, and download from there onto a machine with the new RTX card present. Oh, so this is like a whole nother level of of kind of sketchiness because it's not just NVIDIA telling reviewers who can review their cards, it's NVIDIA telling the card makers who can review the card makers cards. Ahead of launch. Right. So um, honestly, nothing here really raises alarm bells for me. Uh, we signed NVIDIA's NDA. We mm. talked about this on the WAN show before. There's nothing particularly 
um, ODS in there. Like it's it's a pretty bog standard NDA, the same kind that we would have to sign with pretty much anyone. Right. Um, the same kind that doesn't prevent us once the card is out there in the public from saying, saying anything want. we want about right. it. Um, like it's it you know it has stuff in there about not reverse engineering the product and like all mm. the same kind of thing. If you were to get a sample from Apple, Intel, AMD, there would be a very similar NDA to sign. And their driver download portal, they've been using that for at least a couple of years now. Mm. So that's not new. And you already had to provide NVIDIA with an email address and a login so that they could authorize you for the portal. Uh, we've never had trouble getting that going so like at first glance this seems like whoa this is legally iffy or whatever not even legally iffy but just kind of but sketchy. in practice but then in practice it's normal the only way that nvidia the only way nvidia can enforce this is for pre-launch reviews and it is very typical in order to avoid leaks so this is but this is only for before launch yes once the card launches, anybody can grab it and do a of review. Of course. Of course. Yeah, you could go to the store, buy an RTX, whatever the crap, and review it. Do you want me to do that? No, okay. I don't, because we're going to have Anthony do it, because he's far more qualified. Okay. Um, so this is one where, I, I, you know, on the one hand, I, I've given NVIDIA flack many times, many times, at least a dozen times, about what I call their cloak and dagger BS around their launches. And not talking about the comics. Where, uh, no, no, where, where basically, you know, they'll do stuff like they'll invite us to an event, mm. but we can't tell you, you know, what's going to be there Ooh. or, you know, like, whether you should bring a camera operator right? or, and I'm kind of like, look, it's a graphics card. Okay. <laughs> what, what day are you giving us the actual information? Mm. Do, do I need a camera operator there? Is there going to be an internet connection? Can I live stream? Is there an embargo lift? Does it lift immediately when you guys announce it? Or does it lift the next day? I need to know this information so I can do my job. But Linus, it's, it might not just be a graphics card. It might be a fully new you know, experience. Yeah, sure, whatever. It could be a revolutionary so, so basically, ray tracing. My frustration with them for the most part is that I want to be able to do my job. Um, with the flip side being, and I've had the same conversations with AMD, Intel, pretty much you name it. Um, and so my frustrations are probably like, I think they're fair, mm. but then I also understand the other side where they can't, they can't run around or they can't have people who are not getting briefed on the product correctly, who might be running you know, pre-release hardware and or pre-release drivers who don't necessarily understand the full story because it is actually important to get a briefing on something that's not out yet. There might be right. stuff that's not working yet, but the fix is coming. Hey guys, don't test that till the day before. We're gonna have mm -hmm. something for you, but it's not quite there yet. Um, so I think that's also why you don't really wanna pay too much attention to all these like leaks benchmarks that come out and stuff because it's like they're probably running unoptimized software. And the other issue is that part of this <clears throat> whole control over the launch thing that these companies do is about creating a, a fair and level playing field. Hmm. So. If NVIDIA were to allow someone who is not authorized to review the RTX 2080 or the 2080 Ti, if there were to if there were to be some way for that person to get a card and a driver ahead of the launch, that website or that YouTube channel, that publication could go live with a full review right. that may or may not be based on actual finished software, so might paint the product in an unnecessarily either positive or negative. I mean... There have been situations where performance was greater right. and then had something had to be fixed that ended up negatively affecting performance. So people might not be getting an accurate representation of the performance, and it puts everyone else who's playing by the rules and releasing their, uh, their reviews once the NDA lifts at a disadvantage because everyone will already at least think they know how the product performs. So you're basically saying, put yourself in NVIDIA's shoes and, uh, and maybe consider for yeah, a moment that... Yeah, I wouldn't say that, that but... I wouldn't <laughs> well, mind being well, in NVIDIA's shoes. How many billions of dollars revenue did they do last year? Okay, well, but but consider for a second. I mean, like, they are a big company. There's lots of big companies that act in their own self-interest. But, like, consider for a second that there is a decent, you know, reason for them doing this kind of thing. I'd like to know, what, it, what is it that I ignored during my rant? Uh... Ignore Linus ignored the whole chat with his rant. Oh, yeah, sorry. That burn will not... Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Somebody said, let Riley make a review video. 
Just kidding. Um, you don't want me doing Actually, that. I think Riley is going to be working on an LTT video in the near future. I'm working we're, on We're something. not going to tell you guys exactly yeah. exactly what's going on. Oh, no. I shouldn't um, have said that. Big <clears> so, mistake. anyway. Final conclusion. NVIDIA controls AIB launch. Um, totally get it. I wish that review embargoes weren't a thing at all, Perfect, to be mm. perfectly honest with you. I wish that they just said, okay, here it is. Here's the product. Here's the driver. Right. Go. Mm -hmm. That would be ideal. Um, but I also understand why companies feel like they have to do this crap, however frustrating that might be for me as a member of the media. G4's partner program was terrible. Basically terrible. This is not that. This is it's it's far less terrible. It's it's very annoying. Mm. But potentially necessary. Uh, well, no, I don't think any of it's, it's necessary. Not necessary. I think it is necessary for NVIDIA to protect its own interests. Right. Okay, well, from that, <laughs> so, from that perspective. So, necessary. <laughs> not necessary like for things like this to exist in the universe it, it's, all the time. It is, this is not especially helpful for consumers <clears throat> getting an accurate understanding of the performance of the product. Well, but that's because the drivers aren't there yet. Unless they are. See, in this case, Unless they are. I don't have an RTX card. Right. I don't have RTX drivers. I, no, I don't. I don't know how done or not done any of this is. I don't know who we're getting RTX cards from. I don't know when they're coming. Uh, no, for real. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, so I'm I just. I'm just, yeah, I'm just. So. So I'm just saying, like, all of this stuff is very frustrating, very annoying, and we, we wish it wasn't a thing, but for whatever reason, companies do this stuff, and mm. NVIDIA's is not, is not that much worse, if any worse, than what other companies do. It just, it just kind of is what it so is. So you're a NVIDIA stan. NVIDIA stan? Yeah. Is that a country? <laughs> is it, is it globally stan. illuminated? Stan is like a... You know what a stan is? Like, if you're a stan of... A country. No, no, no. Oh, a st like, oh, you stan NVIDIA. Stan? Yeah. It's a, I go on the internet. It's an internet term. Okay. Like a fan. Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. It's, uh, no. See, so you it, hate NVIDIA. No. What? No, it's uh, nothing in life is that black and white. Oh, okay. I mean, we've been accused of bias every way, which, mm. is, which is great. My favorite. This is my favorite thing to read. Mm. I'm going through the comments on a video, and I got one comment. Linus clearly was Intel biased in this video. Yeah. And literally the next comment is, wow, his AMD bias is on display for the entire world. And I'm going to go on. You're biased. Okay. Against, you're biased for both. I think we're riding it just right at that point. <laughs> as long as, yeah, as yeah. long as, like, people, uh, people are always going to agree you're biased. Yeah. But if they can agree that you're biased... For everybody, then I think then I think we're doing a pretty good job. Nice. Now, who's not doing a good job? Um, this was originally posted hey. by Rascal over on the forum, and I, I actually, I, tw I want to say I deserve credit for getting this article huge because I tweeted this like right when it came out. I saw it pop up and I tweeted it on the TechLinked account, and then like an hour later, Gamers Nexus put a thing up. So I was like. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm sure. Right on my coattails, bringing it to the attention of the public. I'm know? sure that given all of the understanding that you have of how video yep. scripting and mm. and editing and Big encoding expert. and uploading works, that that they surely did see your tweet. Yep. And turn out that video in one hour. What can I say? For sure, for sure, no. Gamers Nexus did that. I can't believe this article is still up. <laughs> yeah, you'd think <sighs> they'd take it down. You'd think this page, this page. Tom'sHardware.com slash news slash NVIDIA RTX GPUs worth the money. Is that a comma? Comma. 37689.html. You would think this page would redirect to a gigantic we're sorry at this point. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, my god. So gosh. it is clearly labeled opinion piece. Yeah, but honestly, I read through it, and I thought it was like a parody. Because everyone... Everyone says when new graphics cards and stuff are announced, hey, okay, but wait for the reviews. You know, it's like, hold on, you don't want to be wasting your or money on stuff. Or when a new car is announced. Yeah, anything. Or when a new game is announced. Yeah, yeah. well, especially games. But, but like, don't pre-order. And then, <laughs> and that's what everyone's saying. And then Tom's Hardware is like, just I, buy it. I got a hot take. So their defense 
is paper thin. So this was written by their editor in chief too. Yeah. Like that's just brutal. You know, I will say like Tom's Hardware seems to like most of the time, they have pretty good. I don't know. I find that oh, I don't. I okay. don't go there like a ton, but like when I do go there, it seems to be like a decent site that has like good opinions. It's and... decent for getting like a spec sheet, right? Um, okay, so this is good. They actually have added a note here. <laughs> as with all of our op-eds, the opinions expressed here belong to the writer alone and not Tom's Hardware as a team. This article is a counterpoint to Derek Forrest's equally worthy. See, that kind of makes sense. Why you? Well, because it's like oh, point equally worthy. Not equal. Okay, it's not equally worthy. This is worthless. We encourage readers to check out both articles, form their own opinions, and share feedback in the comment section below. Oh, yeah, fair enough. But it's fair of them to attempt some sort of, like, point-counterpoint type thing. Firing line, if you will. Left versus right. You know? No. Let's, like, no. let's have a dialogue. This is a bad... This is one of those... Okay. So just like, just like the conversation we were having earlier, where I see arguments being made out mm -hmm. in the wild, that I just go, you know, are, are, we, are we really talking here? Yeah. Are 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 your ear holes kind of are they working <laughs> with my mouth hole? Being transmitted? This is you know are they is it making it there or what what's going on here? Like this is the kind of argument that you you can't you can't make. Yeah. It's 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 dumb. It's bad. Like it's got it's actually got a subheading called the real cost of buying outdated tech. Like the cost. There's the not a cost of buying outdated tech. My 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 <laughs> the. Or did you scroll past that? That's my favorite line right there. When your whole life flashes before your eyes, how much of it do you want to not have ray tracing? Like, what's the point? What's the point of living without ray tracing? Are you quitting? Edsel is oh. done. What's that? Are you saying bye? Yeah. Okay, bye. I'll see I you. Interrupt. I'll see you at the uh, airport, right? Waiting. Airport? Yeah. Okay. Do, do Are people, you on the same plate as me? Do, do people know where we're going? I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah. So so this is fun. Um oh, anyway, yeah, we should say. This article is laughable and it is un indefensible, undefensible, Indefen indefendable, indefendable, whatever. In it may it cannot indefendible. be it cannot be defended. Um you should never buy anything without without uh independent evaluation uh -huh. or like trying it first. Like that's why you test drive a car. That's yeah. why you don't just pre-order a Roadster 2 or See, 3 now, or whatever it is and then PC PC Gamer actually it's not linked in the in the yeah. in the description but did you see that article? No, I didn't. PC Gamer actually put up he he was like he referenced Gamer's Nexus and he referenced Tom's hardware and he's like, "Okay, but hold on a second. What about this? What if there's a return policy?" And you're like, "I want I know I'm going to get this card. I know I'm going to get then it." Then go for it. So what if there's a 30-day return policy and you have like a 1000 bucks to drop and you don't care? So the problem with the IT industry, and this was true at our old employer as well, is that a lot of the time there's a uh, there's like a, a restocking fee. Like returning mm. electronics like graphics cards right. is not necessarily as simple as a pair of pants at the Gap or whatever. Right. Um, so as long as you believe that you can get rid of it and you have the disposable money sitting around, fine. But that wasn't but, the argument being yeah, made Yeah, the here. problem was that this argument for doing that it was horrible. It said just horrible. buy it, yeah. not just try it. Like, when I'm 99 years old and I'm lying on my deathbed, yes. and I'm thinking back, and I'm saying like, oh my gosh, I didn't have ray tracing for six months. <laughs> ray tracing. What was the ray point? Ray tracing. <gasps> ray tracing. Deep learning. <laughs> Super sampling. I needed it. Um. That's the other big feature right Our, the ray tracing and dlss yeah um there's a bunch of other topics bet, this week bet you didn't know that um lego built a life-size drivable bugatti from over a million technic pieces yeah um that's pretty cool you should probably go check that out uh bibbidi bloppity something along Bib -bli 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 -blue. there you go yep i mean it doesn't go fast of course because it's you know made of technic but it looks really cool so that's pretty sick um, it's like nice job, guys. Yep. And, and now what? Uh, there's pictures leaked of the iPhone XS. Yeah, we talked about that on TechLink today. Yep. 10s XS. Ten of oh, 10s. I think I think it's going to be 10s. So which is that? I would say that's kind of annoying to me because OS 10, like it's it's you, you write it OS X, but at least there's no other numbers in there. Well, there's no other numbers in this one. Wait. S is not a number, but that's fine. Oh, you're right. Um, and I guess that uh, that leads us to the end of the show. So, 
On the subject of getting tax breaks and not spending it on your employees, Linus Media Group <laughs> actually did get a big tax break mm. and is actually spending it on all of its employees. So over the next week or so, you're probably going to notice some differences in our content lineup. Um, Linus Tech Tips videos will continue to be published throughout all of next week, mm. as will Tech Quickie videos. But um, Tech Linked and I'm The WAN Show, because they are same day productions, are not going to be going up next week nope. because well the, i mean how do you do it yeah the entire team is taking a vacation and all all expenses paid vacation to should i say where we're going i don't know i don't know i didn't say it Aren't on weird people gonna show up I, you know what let's say where we went after we get back yeah how about that i might have already said where we were going i don't know we are heading anyway. into the ether anyway we are we're going to do a corporate retreat because we are spending a bunch of we're going to blow a bunch of money that we got as a big tax rebate for being a media production company in bc on our staff doing something fun and team building and it's going to be great i'm actually super stoked yeah so we're going to have some fun and uh so there will be no end show next week so we'll see you in two weeks two weeks oh yeah wait right yeah, too. Bye-bye! Okay.